five key traits of successful coaches. First up is got to be attention to detail. You look at the very best, the likes of Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp, Mikel Arteta, all these sort of high-flying coaches at the moment, and they've all got minute attention to detail where they spot the fine margins, those little 1% and 2%. And that translates over to us as youth coaches as well. If we're delivering a fundamental session and we're looking at ball control and dribbling, passing, all those little finer details, it's all about those little bits, what part of the foot we're connecting with, where is our body shape when we're receiving the ball, where are we looking when we're passing. And to make a good coach, we've got to be able to identify how we improve those in our players. Next up, communication. This is a massive one. So we need to adapt our communication. So not only are we good communicators, we need to be able to adapt it to who we're working with. Many coaches work with players of all different abilities, whether you're at the very young stages, under six, under seven, or all the way up under 17, under 18, under 19, even adult football. All players are on a different level, whether that be just common sense or intelligence, ability, so many different levels. So we need to adapt our communication to suit the players that we're working with on the pitch at that time. Don't start going into loads of tactical details if you're working with younger under six, under seven players because they just won't understand it. But can we communicate our point across to teach those fundamentals? Um, if we can't get our point across and it's not working, can we evolve and adapt our strategy? If, some, if a session doesn't work, can we sort of tweak it and move our communication style so that players start to understand it a little bit better and get the objectives that we've set out for that session? Discipline, this is a huge one for me. I think discipline is overlooked for us as coaches. It can cause such a headache, certainly at the younger phases, where if players are not listening, not engaging, messing around, it's can we hold the attention of those players and keep them engaged so that it doesn't impact the rest of the team. The last thing we want is one or two players that are disrupting the rest of the session for the players that do want to be there and do want to listen and do want to learn. So having an, a certain element of discipline is absolutely essential for us as coaches. We need to maintain it with the team and we need to make sure that it follows throughout the season so that we don't lose our way and we don't miss our objectives when we turn up to a session because it's not fair on the other players and it makes life more difficult for us as well. So there's nothing more stressful than turning up to a session and knowing that that's just going to be an absolute riot and there's going to be kids running all over the place. It will happen every now and then where you might lose control at the younger stages. Not lose control has probably gone a little bit too far. You shouldn't be losing control at all. But we need to have a certain element of discipline where we can make sure that we adapt and evolve the session so that they still get something out of it. And if there is troublemakers, have something in place where they maybe have a strike system where if they're misbehaving, they get one strike. If they do it again, then they're off the pitch on a little bit of a timeout. So depending on what stage you're working at, as players get older, then we can start to use fitness and things like that. If players aren't engaging or they're, they're misbehaving and stuff, when we can communicate with parents, we can maybe send them on a short shuttle or something like that. There's loads of different ways that you can do it, whatever suits your coaching style and the level that you're coaching at but we absolutely have to have discipline within our sessions. Next up, we've got respect. Now, this is a bigger one than I'd initially anticipated. I think it's certainly huge when you're dealing with parents because you need to have the respect of the parents if you're going to deliver sessions because otherwise you will get parents that will try and take over or they'll give their opinion when actually they've not been involved in the sessions and... You need to have parents on side when you're delivering coaching because the last thing you want is to be coaching something in your session and then it comes to match day and they're telling their player to do something else because they think that they know best. So you have to have the respect of the players. You have to have the respect of the parents. Players is a little bit easier. I think a lot of that comes with credibility. So if you're demonstrating a session, I would always advocate avoid demonstrating a session yourself unless you're comfortable in your ability as a footballer. The last thing you need is to be demonstrating an exercise where you're maybe doing, I don't know, a, a receiving shoot and you absolutely sky the ball or your technique's completely off and you just lose all credibility straight away. As players get older, they will identify these things and it will take away your credibility as a coach and they'll think, why am I listening to him? He doesn't know how to do it himself. So just be wary of when you're demonstrating things. If you're confident in your ability, then by all means, 
But you need to think about that respect element from the players as well. Some of that comes from coming from a place of authority anyway, and you will sort of naturally have a, an element of respect. But it's all about being likable and being on the same wavelength of the, as the players sometimes and sort of earning that respect over time. So it needs to be earned, but you need to think about it as well. Don't go flying into things if you're if you're not quite confident in what you're doing. Just take your time, learn your ways, and it will come in good time. And last up, enthusiasm. This is a huge one for me. Certainly at the younger ages, you need to be enthusiastic. I still deliver my sessions now with under 17s and senior teams with enthusiasm. And it pays dividends because every season I get asked for players want me to coach to take their team or they want to come and join my sessions when actually they don't really have to. They're maybe in a different squad, but they would like to stay on and do extra bits and pieces because they enjoy our coaching. And that comes from having a good coaching team that's enthusiastic and wants to help them develop. Certainly at the younger ages, if you're bored and you're not interested and you're maybe coming across a little bit monotone, then players will not want to come back and it can be difficult. So Absolutely, you have to be enthusiastic. You have to want to be there. It's easy to sound enthusiastic when you enjoy what you're doing and you want to be there. If you've just come in from work and you've not planned your session and you're not organised, then it's really difficult to come across as enthusiastic sometimes. So be organised, get your session ready in advance so that when you turn up, you're ready to go and all you have to concentrate on is getting the best for the players and having a good time and making sure they enjoy themselves. It has such a huge influence on how the session goes and it will also help bring in that respect that we spoke about before and the discipline as well. So enthusiasm is such a big one. You should probably be higher up the list. These aren't in order. But enthusiasm is a massive, massive impact on how well your session will go. And to go with that, if you want to be more organised, then check out our website. There's a 30-day free trial at the moment. It's got loads and loads of session, session plans, loads of drills on there that you can take and use straight away to help you be a little bit more organized as a coach and turn up and be more enthusiastic.